Hey guys, it's Erin. I'm coming at you from New York on a field trip. Very impressed, right? Um, I'm at a media event, so I figured you'd like a change of scenery. I know my office is super exciting with the backdrop. So today we're talking about lifestyle changes. And the song of the day, we're starting off with Love the One You're With by Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Why are we starting off with it? Any guesses? I don't see any hand raised. This one right here. Because when I talk to a new person, a new client, and I hear all the things they don't want to do, or all the things they don't like about my book, or all the things they don't want to eat, or the chia seed pudding looks gross, or whatever it is, they need to have an open mind. So for example, maybe you really love sweet potato toast. You've just never tried it. And by the way, sweet potato toast is a thing. Look it up it's on Pinterest. You can't have everything, so you got to love the one you're with. So your old way, right, we had cheese, and we had lazy boying, and Netflixing, and we also had heart disease, and we had brain fog, and we had cellulite, and much other yucky stuff, right? Over here, we have broccoli, maybe, any chia seed pudding, um, we have surfing, and walking, and water, and better sleep, and sex, and a whole bunch of other good stuff, right? But you can't have it all. So why don't you love the one you're with? Because over here you got so much better stuff, right? So how about you have a better attitude about it? <laughs> and you don't have like a torture. The only caveat being, be aware there's a lot of things that fall under vegetables. Fall under activity. Let me tell you a little story. So my younger brother, Adam, is a very good runner. He just has a lot of ability. He's also worked very hard at it. So when I was, I'm not gonna tell you how old I was. <laughs> when I moved to New York a long time ago, my husband worked a ton, and they had these really great classes in Central Park, um, Roadrunners classes. And they actually teach you how to properly run. I know you think like everybody can run. There's actually, skill involved with running a race and pacing yourself and it's a whole thing anyway so i took these classes my husband worked all the time took plenty of time after work and i was actually pretty good at it up until about an hour and then mentally i was just <laughs> um and i qualified for the marathon and i was marathon training and then I remember it so distinctly, one day I was going to have to get up the next morning and run three hours. It was, going to, it was in August, and it was so humid, you could like touch it. <laughs> and I just was like, I can't do it. I can't do it. And I remember feeling so bad and so guilty and so like, what the hell is wrong with me? Like, my, my kid brother can run, you know, um, a little sibling rivalry there. but. If I had made myself run, yeah, I guess I'd have a medal or something, but I found other things I like to do under the active column. So running isn't my thing, not because I physically can't do it. Mentally, I mean, forget about it. So you don't have to be a runner because your brother's a runner. You don't have to eat chia seed pudding in the morning because I eat chia seed pudding in the morning. However, let's still keep looking for something that is your chia seed pudding or your running or something because there are so many things you can do and eat and be all under the healthy lifestyle arena so just because you know at first you don't like it you're not gonna like anything the first time you do it or feel comfortable the first time you do it think about the first time you wear a pair of shoes first time you meet anybody there's always that break-in period even if it's a good thing a new job, a new house, even if you I don't win the lottery or something, at first it's uncomfortable, or so I've heard if you win the lottery. If you've won the lottery and you disagree, please let me know. But there's always that sort of awkward stage. It's supposed to be awkward. That's how you know it's new. Nothing is supposed to just automatically be normal because it's a new thing. Your body's not used to it. 
there's always a learning curve. Also, sometimes when you try something new, maybe you have a bad teacher. I was paddleboarding one time in Bermuda and we were at this hotel and there was this man, he was pretty overweight and he was on this paddleboard and he couldn't stand up and I look at him and his, um, his paddle was like one third the size it was supposed to be. So later on he and I were, we were both at the restaurant or whatever and I said, you were having a hard time out there, weren't you? And he goes, yeah, it's because, you know, he like made some sort of joke about his, his like Santa belly or whatever. And I said, actually, the equipment's faulty. Said, what? And I said, the paddle, they're, they're missing a huge piece of it. He said, oh, I, I thought it was my fault. I said, no, the equipment isn't there. So don't necessarily assume it's you. There's a lot of things, but just keep looking and keep trying because those lifestyle changes are what sustains the change, what sustains the good stuff. Because having those healthy habits are what we're looking for. Because we, we know the quick fixes don't take. The quick fixes are the fad diets. You know, we want to have those long lasting, ingrained, never going to go away, sort of, this is what I do now, new normal sort of things, not the trends, not the, it was a phase. This is how it's going to be. That's what you want. So the best way to do that is to find something you love and love the one you're with. I had to go there. Sorry, guys. Okay. Have a good day and I'll catch you later. And.